Uh, welcome back. Um, going to do a video on bracing today. I'm not actually going to do it just because like, I feel like you guys kind of get catfish a little bit. I'm not on the tools, I don't think, near as much as people following think I am. I spend a lot of time in the office running the tool company. Um, so I've come out today to do a run through on bracing. It's probably not a bad way to do this because you can kind of get an overview and then I'll do a video later on of like actually doing it. Um, which I think could work well because there's like it's not a ton in it once you know it like it's very repetitive but it's kind of important to learn um, most inspection items come back to like point loads and bracing they're the two main things um, so yeah getting it right knowing the theory behind it's pretty important stuff so I'll put up like a photo of the plans and the bracing schedule that we used on this job there's a few ways bracing works um, depending on the builder. So sometimes an engine, most of the time an engineer will lay it out for you. Um, some of the older builders with their builder's license, they can still um, do their own engineering and their bracing. There goes the plans. Um, they can still do their own engineering and bracing and then you work off uh, the building codes at AS1684. In this example, we've got engineer's plans um, and they've given us a schedule of what they want done and how they want it done. So we'll jump into that and show you what we got. Uh, um, so the first brace we're going to run through is hoop iron brace. This is probably a bad example because the drawings are pretty loose on this one considering what it is. Um, like these straps here, I'm still in frame, at the bottom I'll do a close up on them. Um, they don't need to be there but on the code standards you do so the boys are just used to throwing them in. Um, yeah you kind of just get extra points and you'll pass inspection easier so putting this stuff on we'll lay it when it's flat on the ground and we'll shoot the strap underneath and we'll run it over and temporarily put a nail in the top um, and then from there you stand it up tension it um, these things here are called tensioners you need them just to take the slack out of the brace so the idea of the brace is to stop the wall moving that way um, Sim same concept as a temporary brace, just slim line so you can still get bricks past it. Um, yeah, so two nails in each stud, wrap over the top plate, wrap under the bottom. A lot of blokes don't bother wrapping under the bottom, they'll just shoot it to the face. You can, I just hate it and I think it looks ugly, but you definitely can, so it's not wrong. Um, straps over the top we go pretty hard on strapping especially on this one because it's a tin roof um so uplift is a big concern if it was a tile roof the bracing would be even more relaxed than it is um as far as fixing it down it'll say in your engineer's notes so on this one it's just got a hand driven 75 mil concrete nail at each end um that's pretty lenient a l most of them will have um a concrete screw on each end of the brace that's kind of about it for hoop iron um i'll throw up a copy of like the plans we're working to and a copy of the code plans uh, so that's there just the well that you say hand driven concrete nail but they can be ram set as well um and then yeah you want to aim for four nails into the plate when you do this um, that's about what's called for and then these are the tensioners so these ones are kind of shit there's ones you can get that uh, your drill attaches on and tight uh, sorry your drill attaches onto that side and it tightens up a lot quicker the boys would have had to go around put the claw or the hammer over it and tighten up that way um, I'll do a video of like installing bracing at some point I'll show you how you get it like pretty tight before you actually use the tensioner. Um, in my opinion, you shouldn't use like the full throat of the tensioner. So see how we've still got a gap back in here. Um, that means it was properly tight before they actually put the tensioners on. Um, yeah, the rest I'll go over in an installation video, but this will give you like a rough overview. And I'll also link the standards if you're curious of bracing um 
in a cryptic way the standards do tell you how to figure out what bracing goes where if enough people are interested or do it do, do a video on um how to work that out because it's like part of getting your builder's license you are um, meant to know sweet this is a ply brace three mil thick um your engineer will say how thick it's got to be or if you're doing it the old way it'll say in the code when you look it up um main part on this is getting your nail spacings right and getting the nails in correctly so this one was like pretty chill it was just 150 mil nails um all the way around um and through the middle as well uh on a more intense brace you'll have like 50 mil spacings across the bottoms edges um and 150s through the middle and you'll have to nail the noggins don't have to do that on this one it's just 150 all the way around it's a good idea when you do um, ply brace if you're sitting it internally i'll get to that in a minute if it's got to go internally pick it up off the ground it sucks up water um, and your nails end up not doing a heap because they get waterlogged gets really soft and your nails can just pull through um, so always leave it up when it's sitting inside i'm putting ply internally always avoid it where you can um, obviously sometimes it's called for inside so it's <laughs> got to go there um, but if you have an option between putting it inside and putting it outside I always opt for outside even upstairs I think it's worth the extra effort if you can safely nail it off on the outside um, just for mostly the lockup guy trying to straighten ply is a bit of a prick because you've added three mil to one section of the wall you've got to add three mil to the whole wall um, so you might come through and whack your ply on in three seconds but the lockup guy is going to have to come through and put a packer on every stud or you're just going to have a massive bow in your plaster right. so that's why i put it on the outside um, again these plans are pretty light so internally on the bottom plate fixing it to the concrete it's just a hand driven concrete nail that's exceptionally light on um, usually especially on ply not so much on hoop iron especially on ply you'll concrete screw it um, and then sometimes you'll get called for a coach screw with a washer in each corner as well um, depending on the job depending on the builder on a lot of the volume builders they'll have like over engineered as a standard so that's when you'll have to do coach screws on the corner um, and concrete screws into the slab I'm doing a close-up you'll notice the nails they're all either just proud a little bit or flush so flush is ideally where you want it um, if they're overdriven the inspector's going to make you shoot them again um, the boys have done pretty well on these ones getting them pretty much flush to the surface you got to be careful with it because as your air compressor drains out of air it varies the depth so when you're on like a fresh cycle of your tank it might overshoot a little bit um, and then as you get towards the end you might be undershooting a little bit and having to tap them in so you just got to dial in, in your equipment to suit um, and dial in the depth of your nail gun as well something else, else worth mentioning at this stage of the job is hoop line straps going over lintels um, they act as a tie down so when wind picks up and you've got the roof tied to the top plate the top plate can't peel away from the frame and go off into the ether um, yeah so next to uh, i think you only have to do them on tin roof it's good practice to do it on um tile roof as well though so if you've got you need to either have like ply holding the lintel in so where we've got ply you don't have to have um a strap because the ply counts as the tie down um, but where you don't you need to run it up over and down the other side um just to make sure it's yeah all tied in nice and tight um, the other thing depending on the job too is you might have to put them on the bottom um, it's good practice to do both um, so this job we've done every couple of studs even if there's not a lintel there just to be safe pass inspection like they're really easy to put on when the walls are on the ground because you can lift the plate up slide it under and off you go um, on this job the builder didn't supply any 
actual stud ties. Um, so you just cut lengths of hoop iron, but it's pretty common. You'll get like a gang nail saddle looking thing. I'll put a photo up of it. Um, Um, you hit that on with your hammer to each side of the stud and that's your tie down. Um, other than that, that's probably it for this one. Um, hope you got something out of it. I'll let it together as best I can. Um, I'm going to Sydney Build Show next week as well. So we will be there on... Uh, what is it? It's fucking weird. It's like during the week. So it's like Wednesday and Thursday is the show days. So if you're around the Sydney Exhibition Building, I think it is, um, come down. I don't know what hall we're in. Just look up the People's Tool Co. and I'll be kicking around there with some boys. So should be good. Come down and say good day if you want. Yeah. Thanks for watching.